Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rosso Neri Time. This is episode two. I'm here with my uh, big brother and a uh, good friend, longtime brother. I yeah. think ever since I was born, he's been my brother. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, um, we're here. We're going to do episode two. We're watching Milan versus Roma. Again, this is Rosso Neri Time. Johnny, um, we were talking a little bit before the show, and you were reminding me of the rivalry that's sort of exists between Milan and Roma. Yeah. Do you want to give our, our viewers a little sort of uh, quick kind of history recap on where where that all started from, that rivalry? Yeah, so the rivalry between uh, Roma and Milan is uh, basically uh, the fans. There's been some violence uh, on both ends. So there's been a little bit of history with that. And uh, unfortunately, in Italy and a lot of parts of the world, there is a, a history of fan violence. Um, and, you know, thankfully, FIFA has kind of cut down on that. And uh, and also with all the, 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 the racism issues, there's been a lot of work on that. So, you know, hopefully this is just a match on the field which unfortunately there's no fans, so there is no violence so, there. So maybe that, that'll, that'll help, right? Help yeah, with all the, yeah. the kind of energy and stuff, yes. keep it a little more tame. Exactly. Um, what we're talking about are ultras. Ultras would be called hooligans. That would, yeah. be the, the defin that would be the sort of translation. So in soccer, they've tried for years to eliminate the hooligans. In Italy, they call them ultras. So they're these groups that basically sort of just start their own fan bases and... and Unfortunately, a lot of times their methods aren't uh, aren't exactly uh, family friendly, yeah. and uh, like my brother said, FIFA has been trying to do um, a very good job. They've been they've been trying, and it's worked in England. It's 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 really worked actually in England. Yeah, England, 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 England was one, yeah, England was one of the worst. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's actually I can't remember the name of the book, but there's a great book on how they would strategically like almost like a, like, like a, infiltrate like, like infiltrate infiltrate yeah. yeah and then almost like like an army yeah situation. it's, uh, it's so. strategic man they got strategy they're not they're not a joke anyway so we're gonna watch the game today but before we start we have our beer um like my buddy vince said in the in the intro we're gonna be doing a little bit of uh food football fun a little bit of everything uh, today we have some beer yeah so we get a little bit of cheers Look, cheer. uh, we got the that. milan cup just right. just for everybody where we're not uh, for everybody we also have our milan espresso cups yeah, yeah. why not ah. cheers good luck mm. and ah. some, special oh, some special cookies from special cookies from mama yes oh. we love you mom anyway yes. a little bit of cheers in the cookie. we won't take a bite of the cookie because it's going to be kind of rude yeah. eating while we're talking yeah so anyway thank you mom we love you you're the best you make good cookies you make good everything Anyway, yeah. so what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the game. So we're going to get our producers behind the scenes to get that game going for us. And uh, we're excited. Milan, Roma. Milan needs to win this game if they want to keep up these hopes of winning this Scudetto. So yeah. let's go, boys. Let's try to get this one, okay? Depending on the results. Eh? Here we, we go. We got the yeah. whistle. Oh, we got uh, yeah, really we got a little bit of in this first half. That's a now it is time you know? for them. Yeah, what's up with that? I've never seen, seen that. that. So we have Rossoneri, black and uh, red, generally, but today we got blue jerseys, so uh, we're kind of representing yeah, Italy a little bit more. Yeah. Why not? Well, which, in uh, hindsight, right, Puma's also the uh, sponsor. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Rebic, that's what he loves to do from Absolutely. that left-hand side. That looks pretty interesting. Those are pretty cool jerseys. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. I guess there's Rome's in the, Linking up the, the traditional the red. In that number 10 role. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to recap the first half, Milan-Roma. So Milan had majority of the possession. I think it was around 53% to 47%. And, uh, you know, finally, Milan looks like they're a little bit um, eager to come back into the form they were prior to these last couple of games. So, um, you know, hopefully this looks, uh, you know, uh, kind of a good point for the uh, second half. Hopefully we continue. And uh, now, Andrea, would you like to elaborate on uh, the one nothing lead that Milan has? So we ended up this first half with a one nothing result. And that uh, that is because Milan got a penalty kick. Now, Johnny and I were talking a little bit during the break, a little bit before we started here. We're not quite certain that was a penalty shot, yeah. but we're biased. We'll take it. It's our Milan. We'll take the penalty shot. You got to take advantage of the opportunities that are given to you. 100%. It kind of sucks that... You know, we don't necessarily agree, but it's not up to us. The referee called the penalty kick. We get the penalty kick. And, of course, who takes that penalty kick but Mr. Kessie. Mr. Kessie. Right. And um, when you have Ibrahimovic sort of promoting you to be the one to take the penalty shots, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what better motivation you need than that. So Kessie did as he normally does. He just finished, man. He just did a hard, really, really just precise strike low into the corner. 
And even though the goalie guessed right, it was just too hard of a, a shot for him to stop. Yeah. And, and I think that's what's important on a penalty shot is not necessarily are you trying to trick the goalie. It's always nice to make the goalie look a little silly, like he guessed wrong. But I think when you just pick your point, you pick your spot, yeah. and you and you know you're going to kick it hard into that spot, chances are most of the time you're going to score. Uh, Johnny, you you played soccer a lot. Yeah. Uh, you've taken a lot of penalty shots. Yeah. What what was your approach to taking penalty shots? Well, you know what? One of uh, one of my most favorite coaches always said, if you're in doubt, uh, down the middle, right? Look, let the goalie catch you looking at one side and go down the middle. Um, but, I mean, with Kessie, I got to say that he's been perfect this year. Um, and his approach, when he walks up, he's calm, he's confident. I think Ibra's had a few misses this year, so his confidence is a little low. And unfortunately, in sports, when your confidence is yeah. not where it needs to be, sometimes you need to pass the torch. And I think that's what he's done. Uh, but, yeah, Kessie's been spectacular. And just not only penalty shots, but just as a player. He's in general. a solid Milan player. Yeah, yeah midfield. He's owned the midfield this year. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Yeah. And, um, and that's awesome. So, Johnny, you were saying we have a little bit something more to look forward to. Yeah, so Milan got lucky. They won on away goals. So they're through to the next round. I think it's the round of 16, right? That's Quarterfinals. That's correct. So we drew um, Manchester United. <laughs> so that is a classic. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, it's in the Europa League. But that... Rivalry goes back to Champions League oh. when Milan won in 2007. So uh, we beat Manchester with a Ronaldo, with all the superstars. And that's when we had Kaká and Shachenko. So, was there. So, I mean, it's nice to see them back in, in, in the Europa League. But next year, hopefully, if they both finish at you know the top of their leagues, we're going to see both these clubs back where they should be. Uh, Man United and and Milan back in champions exactly they deserve it you know I mean as as clubs and as historic as they are they deserve to be in the upper tier and you want to uh, see them there exactly but you almost right? feel like the fan base and well anyway guys you know what enough of the rambling yes. um, we're looking forward to the second half so please stay with us enjoy the second half on your own uh, whatever programming you choose to watch we're gonna do the same and uh, we'll be back and uh, we'll see where we go from here let's go Milan go Milan for Milan cheers buddy cheers bro. Oh, we got something developing. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. not much. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, unfortunately, one one. So, guys, it was a nice goal, right? Yeah, I guess. Okay, Vince. Nice goal. Nice goal. <laughs> Thanks. Remember, this is a Rossoneri tie, eh? so, so uh, another another French guy, right? Not Giallo Rosso. Yeah. This is Rossoneri. Yeah. Vince, Vini. Oh, but come on, guys! You just let him walk in. What's going on? doing there? Both of them look. Yeah. Well, here. Okay. You think the players are just afraid to make that foul because it's so close? Like he's in the box. Right? Well, nobody was even here. He wasn't even here. Yeah. No, what Donnarumma? Hey, normally buddies, but I don't know what you want him to do there. I, I don't think the goalie has a chance. E Latini, okay. You want to use that word? That guy. I don't think Veratut's anywhere near Platini. Yeah, we can't compare. Okay, a take it easy, English guy. Yeah. English announcer guy. All right. I think I think he kind of uh, yeah. went overboard on that. The one. English, the English in soccer. I don't know. Eh, eh. You know? They invented it, I guess. Right? Yeah, I guess they invented everything. Right? They like to talk like they know how to play soccer, but they kick and they run. That's what they do. How many World Cups? 1966? Yeah, but yeah. if that was even a... It's a controversial World Cup. I don't even know if they really won it. If they had bar back then, they didn't win this one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, good pass by Spina Sola and a great finish. I think what happens sometimes, too, is that the defender, you don't quite realize... The guy you're defending, what he's capable of. I don't think anybody thought that that guy was capable of finishing that goal. Yeah, but the, he does have like ten goals this season, so he has had a good season. So, but but I mean, in hindsight, you know what? In sports, it's it's nice to criticize when you're watching. This is true, but it's not as easy when you're in the field, right? Yeah. So it is what it is. Unfortunately, it is one one. But, uh, so now we're tied. Uh, this is not the kind of result we're looking for. So it's super important. Milan picks it up and scores a goal here. They need to win this game. We need three points. One point does not help anybody. Well, it helps other teams, not us. That's well, yeah, cool. especially because Inter won today. Yeah, Inter won today. They, they look like they're, they're just off and running. So we need three points today. Three points. Capisci?
So just so everybody's aware, Ibrahimovic actually, Ibrahimovic actually came off. So he's injured. I think he has a thigh injury. So uh, we have Leo come on. He's a young Portuguese striker. Um, he's actually doing quite well. He's a little inconsistent, but he's got a lot of potential. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. And I think it was just precautionary because Ibra is 39 years old, so. No. Yeah, he's not a spring chicken. No, as they say. As they say. Yeah. Oh, Salamaka. Salamaka. Oh, bitch. Oh, nice turn. Bad bitch. Good turn. Hey. Oh, no. No. Oh. 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 Look at that, baby. Let me be quiet. I love him. I love him. He's so angry all the time. I love him. Croatians are angry. No, Croatians no. are angry. They're angry people. But it's okay. It's okay. Yes. You take that. You take that anger, you turn it into goals. Yes. Way to go, Rebic, buddy. Nice ball, good turn, and great finish. Second hey, Salamaker is another young, another young player. He's but actually from Belgium. Oh, okay. From Let's Belgium. look at this nice turn into the space. Nice look at this turn. Look at that turn. And turn and look at the finish. Second post. Sorry, the post I go wrong now. That's how you score. Let's go, Rebic. And Rebic last year was uh, what? On a streak of how many goals? Oh yeah, he was great, doing well. He, yeah, he kind of, well, he got hurt right yeah. this year. Yeah. So he's been. Uh, so it's nice oh. to see him back on the score. Yeah. There's the coach slapping him on the wrist, yeah. Mr. Pioli. Mr. Yeah. Pioli, who was gonna get fired. Yes, they decided to keep him, and he's went on a streak this past year, and he's convinced a lot of people otherwise. So, you know what? Good on him. That was not easy. A lot of coaches. Have come through Milan in the past few years. Yes, they've tried with former players, yeah. with experienced coaches, non-experienced coaches. Who we have? We had Inzaghi. We had Seedorf. Seedorf. Gattuso. Gattuso. Right. Uh, but Gattuso's moved on to Napoli and done a pretty decent job there. Although his job is at risk right now. They've been. I read an article earlier that he's a little bit on the hot seat as well. And then we had Giampaolo in between there, who's not a former player um, for Milan, but. He was someone they thought was going to turn the team around, but that didn't work out. Went over to Pioli. Pioli was actually Paolo Maldini's choice. Paolo Maldini, for those of you that know soccer, will know that name. For those of you that, for those of you that don't know that name, search it and look it up because uh, you're never going to find a defenseman like that ever again. And now it's 2-1, baby. We're winning. For Samila. Okay, everybody. Everybody, you go there. You go here. The coach is conducting with his fingers. The coach is like an uh, he's like a conductor, like an orchestra. You go here, you go there. Huh? It's like chess. Soccer is like chess, right? It is. It is exactly. Exactly. Very tactical. That's why it took Americans a while to get uh, into soccer. <laughs> Thinking the Americans call it soccer. It's actually football because you play with your feet. Yeah. And football, which the American football. They only kick it once. Yeah, and they don't even like the kickers. Yeah, they, they, they always like make fun of them and all that. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Fazio is out. Oh, he's making the change. Yeah. Mr. Fazio, Argentinian national player. Mr. Fazio. Mr. Fazio. Oh, wait, this is not Fabio. No. This is Fazio. Yeah. No hair. This guy's not the model. No. He's not the model. Mr. Fazio, when he played with Argentina in the, uh, which World Cup was it? The recent World Cup. Um, played defense. Not very good defender. <laughs> France really took a liking to him. 4 2 against Argentina. So they liked him so much they played on his side. All oh, ready to get? Ah, that penalty, I don't know, but whatever. 2 1, we're moving on. Okay, 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 okay. No foul, no foul. Way to go, Tomori. Tomori just came from Chelsea. That's right. Tomori actually, yeah, that's right. Johnny's right. We just got him from Chelsea. Um, they've been struggling with their center backs a bit. Um, Romagnoli's been getting some criticism. He is the captain of the team, but if you're the captain, you got to take the criticism, right? You got to bear a lot of the brunt of that stuff. Um, so to have him not on the field today is a little concerning because you want your captain to be able to be your captain. But it is what it is. He only made a choice. Coach went with Tomori, and so far, so good, I guess. Yeah, and I think, and I think that was a, a direct product of that Inter Milan game where Romagnoli looked um, like, you know, unfortunately, 
not at his best. That's right. right. He was exposed. We don't want to criticize him, but you know, you also have for like Lukaku who can expose one of the some of the best defenders in the world, right? So. Donnarumma. What do you think of that defense, Johnny? Nowadays, I see a lot of, I see a lot of this, where where teams will collapse into the 18-yard box. With, with, oh, oh, he's pulling up. What did he do? Something wrong there. I'm not sure. Um, what do you I think? Mean, I find the defenses tend to collapse a lot more, and they clog their box with their players. Yeah. And they play that cross, right? Yeah. What do you well, think about that? Do you, do you find that as like a well, it's, it's difficult to say because, I mean, when you're collapsing, you're just trying to keep the zone, right? Uh, and I think with today's game, because of the VAR, sometimes you hesitate to make contact uh, because they can review things. So I don't know if it's maybe a, a strategy or maybe a little bit of hesitance, but, I mean, it's hard to say. I, I mean, if it goes bad, it's bad. If, if, if you win the ball, then win the ball looks it's good, good, right? So, uh -oh. so, and then, yeah, here we go. Uh -oh. The goal scores oh, have an injury. Yeah. Not a good thing for Milan. So this is the guy that just scored the, the go-ahead goal. Yeah. This is not good. We don't want to see Rebic on the floor like that. Not, not a lot. We've had, we had problems with injuries this year. And um, he's doing this. Yes. That means he doesn't want to play anymore. That means it's time to come off. And the problem is, is this year Milan has had a lot of injuries. Uh, unfortunately, our depth is not as, as, as decent as Inter. So That's right. We don't really have the players to replace, but... I mean, hopefully, get somebody a chance to, you know, prove them. Someone's gonna have to step up. Someone's gonna have to step up. Maybe you. No. The English guy to be quiet. <laughs> I don't know if they know how to be quiet over there. Yeah. Unfortunately, boy. All right. Well, he's off. That takes another another thigh injury. Another thigh. The thigh. So we gotta look at what's going on with the thighs over there. What's he saying? Are you going? Oh, Kruni. What do you think of this change, Johnny? Kruni is not necessarily um, not an attacking player. I won't lie to you. I don't know much about Kruni. Um, I mean, sounds like he's Croatian too. So the only thing I can say is a Croatian for a Croatian. So I don't know. <laughs> He's not really an attacking player, though. He's more of a defensive player. So, is this Pioli taking making a tactical change now because they're up two one? Does he want to sit back a bit and defend more? I don't necessarily promote that mentality all the time. I think sometimes it's good to continue to push. But coach made his his choice. He's a professional coach. I'm not. So, obviously, he knows better than I do. Mayoral. Oh, Sharawi. And he and Sharawi was in China. That's correct. Just recently came back to The player coming on for Roma right now, his name is Stefan El Sharawi. I know his name looks a little not Italian, but he's actually Italian. He actually plays for, for Italy, the Italian national team player. Um, so he's from the Faroe Islands. I'm not sure if people are familiar with the Faroe Islands. A lot of people probably don't even know that that's a place, yeah. but that, that's a country. But he has Italian citizenship, I believe, from a grandmother or grandfather. That's usually how it works. A lot of international players have that. Here we go. Come on, Alexei. Salamakas. Makasalas. Salik Makis. Go, Calabria. Pass. No. That was very, wasn't very close. No. I make it more dramatic, but it wasn't that close. <laughs> the angle wasn't there. Give me a break, man. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I wanted to go in. I wanted it to go in. It's wishful thinking. Wishful thinking, you know? So we're talking about how does one become a certain fan of a certain team or city? And you would think, for the most part, with sports, people tend to, to gravitate to where they're from. So if I'm from Toronto, I'm a Maple Leaf fan, which I'm not, I'm a Boston Bruin fan. Uh, if I'm from Montreal, I'm a Montreal Canadian fan, which I hate the Montreal Canadian. Anyway, so for the most part, if you're from that city, you got to cheer for them, right? That's the mentality generally, but that's not the case with us with Milan because no. we're actually from Rome. So technically from Lazio, the from province, Lazio yeah. which is the, the, the region, the region yeah. you would think we'd be cheering for Rome because Rome or is in our region or Lazio. Right, both who have teams in Serie A that are not great, but competitive enough to, to cheer for. 
But we didn't grow up that way. Our father was a Milan fan. So for us, it's always been AC Milan. And they were fantastic. Like we grew up in such an era of amazing Milan teams. So for us to be fans was super simple. So, but explain to us, how did our dad okay. get there? So in our town, we have uh, my dad's brother, Santino, who's his oldest brother. They take a step closer. Um, I mean, so he is, he is a Milan fan. And so my dad became a Milan fan because of his older brother. But the middle brother, who's a little bit of a black sheep, yes. became the Juventini fan, which most of our family in the area, which in Italy, you have to understand, you live in a town, your family pretty much lives within enough where you can just cross the street and go say hi to everyone down the street. So it's beautiful that way. But most of our family are Juventini fans. You know, I mean, we don't, we don't, we don't hate them for it. You don't I pick mean, your family. Right? Choices are choices. You make your choices. Exactly. But our dad is a Milan fan because of his older brother, because he traveled a lot to the northern parts of Italy and he became <laughs> truck driver, became a Milan fan when Johnny Rivera, which is a you know really prestigious Milan player, was at his height. And so that's the history of why we're Tifosi of Milan. And then we just grew to have passion for Milan. And that's why we are Milanisti. And we're Milanisti. And yeah. uh, uh, as much as we, you know, love our relatives that are Juventini, yeah. we don't love them for that reason. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we love you, but yeah, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I and then we have we have a Sampatoria fan. Too. We have a Sampatoria fan. We have a cousin that, that's all. So you would think, why isn't he a, a, a Roma or Lazio yeah. fan? And he likes Sampatoria. Why? Because we don't even know what happened. I think maybe. Well, that's when 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 I think Vial was it. Vial? Oh, Vial Vial was there. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times, what happens too is you find a player that you like so much, yeah, you and connect. you just connect with that. That's thank you. That's a great word. Yeah. You connect with that player, and you just become a fan of whatever team they play for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, that was a close one. Yeah. So, yeah, so there a little bit of history. A little bit of history. There you go. But uh, Milan's still the best, so too bad everybody else. Yeah. We'll yeah. get there. We'll be back on top. We'll yeah. get there. Slowly but surely. No. Oh. Like they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. Was That's it? right. Rome was not built in a day. But they also say all roads lead to Rome. Ah. I think they made a mistake. I think it's supposed to be... All roads lead to Milan. Yeah. They made a mistake there. They made a mistake. So we're going to change it. We're changing that saying to, it's no longer all roads lead to Rome. Tutti it's all, stradi tutti stradi vanno a, Milano. vanno a Milano. Okay. Tutti stradi vanno a Milano. It's changed. Everyone's changing history now. Everybody's eliminating and removing things from history. We're removing that. He's, he fouled him. Look at that. Nah, no, come on. What's going on there? I don't even know what to say. What, what, what would you say here, Joa? I think Mkhitaryan uh, basically had no chance and figured that that was the best thing. Oh, what do we have going on there, eh? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's a relationship between those two guys that happens yeah. behind the scenes. I don't yeah. know. Here, look at they were getting a little too uh, close with each other. Yeah, no, no, he's mad. Oh, he's mad. I don't think he liked the fact that the buddy was, uh, you know, groping him a little. I think he got a little bit upset. But the foul was conceded by the Roma player. So, so what do you think about this in soccer? Uh, another thing I want to get your opinion on, John. Yeah. What is it with soccer players that they don't ever want to submit to the fact that no matter how much you complain to the referee, he's not going to change his mind. No referee in history has ever said, you know what, player? I'm wrong. You're right. I'm not going to give you the yellow card anymore. Ooh, did you see that? I don't know. Nice well, anyways, I think Why that, do players always... Is it just the, they're I, in the heat of the can moment? I, can I speak You're from a player. experience? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Um, personally... Speaking of which, yeah. this guy holds a few records for most yellow red cards. So. Yes, yes. I went through a streak where yeah. um, my most of my cards were due to the fact that <laughs> I argued with the referee. Now, why do you do that? I think it's human nature. Just it's hard to admit when you're wrong. So... Mm -hmm. Basically, it's learning and understanding that sometimes it's better not to say anything because sometimes you get ejected because you say too much. Keep talking. And sometimes your vocabulary is not appropriate. Mm. Oh, so do, well, do you speak from experience? I speak from using certain words that don't need to be used. Yes. Well, I used to watch him a lot. So let's just say a lot of games uh, that I watched ended with my brother not finishing game for one reason or another. 
too much passion sometimes. Yeah, sometimes passion is good, but you need to really dial it down. So this is where you're going to look at the team that's going to hold more possession right now and basically try to run the clock down. So the possession game in soccer has become very relevant during the two mid to late 2000s up to now. So that all started with the whole Barcelona mentality, right? Which was the brainchild of um, Mr. Uh, Dutchman. Yeah, this uh, is this is Yo step Johan, up, Johan Cruyff. Step up and yeah. explain so, to our viewers. So Johan Cruyff became not only a player of Barcelona but also a manager, and he structured his development around the youth level. So he brought everybody from. Uh, like, you know, we talk about Messi. If you don't know who Messi is, then I'm not going to explain it to you. So Messi was a product of the Barcelona system. Messi as a child went around uh, Italy trying to get into clubs, but was rejected because of his health issues. Barcelona took a chance and it was a pretty decent chance. So during that time, um, Messi, uh, who was it? Javi, um, Iniesta, who holds all the product of the youth level system. And so this is what they did. They built them from the bottom up. And so that was Johan Cruyff, which was the brainchild of the Dutch system of total football, which is what the Brazilians call the beautiful game or what people will call fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in other words, not English style football. Yes. Which you have something against the English at this point. Yes, I do. Yes. Clearly. Which our cameraman in the back from India will probably <laughs> be on your side with that, right? We're not going to go into history, but we know that history, right? Nobody likes when the English... Uh, yes, we all have a love affair with, 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 with the English, don't we? Yes. yes. The love affair. Yes. Well, we're from Canada, so technically... We still are. Yeah. yeah. We're under their, their rule. Yeah. yeah. They call hey, this boys, a play how are you? How you doing? Hey, 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 hey how's, 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 the, how's the game going? How's the game going? How are you? Two one. Two one's a good result. Yeah. Awesome. So you guys ready to uh, to eat after the game? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. What are we eating today? What are you making? Well, we're making some nice wings, but we're making two sets. So explain to our viewers. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're making two sets of wings. One a la paisana and one Vinny style. So... Uh, What's a la paisana? What's a la paisana? I don't know. That's somewhere where are my co-hosts and chefs. Oh, so it's, 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 it's a mystery. Yeah, it's a mystery. mystery. It's a mystery. And what's, what's Vinny style? Mine is uh, just regular wings, but with Vinny spice. So oh, gonna, oh, the Vinny spice. Yeah, is that calabresa yeah. spice? It's not like spice. That's it. So, um, so I'm just going to make you guys get back to the game. It's yeah. almost over. Well, thanks for coming out. Uh, you guys are doing an awesome Thank job. You, oh, and so good, uh, sure. I hope you guys are hungry. Oh, for sure. Always. Yes. Always. Forever. Well, well, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we're see. definitely going to have an appetite if we finish for sure. I'm going to get back to the kitchen, right? Guys? Go, go get back to it. Yeah, we're hungry, so hurry up. Yeah. Hey, what you do that for? What do you do that for? Yeah. I don't know, but like, yeah. it would be nice to hear some Italian commentating too, eh? Well, we, you were saying about the uh, foreign yeah. players. We, when we grew up watching soccer, believe this or not, in Italy, I won't speak to other leagues, but in Italy, you were only allowed three, as they would say in Italian, stranieri, three star starters. Right. So that means guys from outside of Italy. So they, you can only have three of them starting. Whereas now that rules doesn't exist. So you, part of us, as much as we love soccer and we have nothing against other countries and other players from other countries, you want to see your own national team develop at its best. So when you see other players from other countries sort of take over your league, you're like, uh, how is that going to affect oh, yeah. our own internal development, our own national team? Yeah. And it affected Italy a little bit, but Italy in the past few years has sort of made a little bit of a turn yeah. with Mancini at the helm. He's been brought in more young Italian players, but it's like what my brother said, he wants to see them starting. It's no good for our national team if you have a bunch of talented young Italian players and they're sitting on the bench while you – you prop up other countries' national team players, which is not – It's a tough, nothing, it's a tough conversation yeah, to have, yeah. but and, – and, and, that, and that comes from – a little history on that comes from in Europe when it was more of a labor issue. So when, when Euro, the European Union uh, was, was uh, uh, initiated, they started a labor where it doesn't matter where you're from, um, you can work anywhere in Europe as long as you're a European citizen. And that's where that came from. And that affected soccer, you know, also, unfortunately, which not unfortunately, I mean, 
I love soccer from all over the world. But like I said, when you have a national team, you want to see your young players develop. Well, it's nothing personal. No, it's not. It's and, and it has nothing to do with, with where you're from. Yeah, you just want to, you know. You want your team to do the best, right? Exactly. But at the same time, I love cheering on Milan and watching these foreign players do so well. And they're so talented and so good. It's, it's a really, it's a struggle. It's a tough thing to, to deal with. It's a balance. Yeah. yeah, it's a tough balance. Exactly. Yeah. It is. Good game. There we go, there folks. Go. There's a triple whistle. The three, three, three. So we have we have how many points behind now? Two. Hey, look at Maldini. That's Paolo Maldini. You see how happy he is? If he's happy, we're happy. Eh? Anyway, folks. And his wife is in his world. Good choice. And his wife is from Venezuela. Oh, yeah. Love those Venezuelan ladies. Yeah. Anyway, so that was a good game. Um, I'm going to turn down the volume here. Yeah. Wonderful finish for us. We so, got our three points. We got we not what we needed out of it. Yeah. Maybe not the prettiest no, result, prettiest no. game. But, uh, but you know, we needed those three points because uh, Inter today, 3-0 uh, against Genoa. So uh, we need to keep up. Hopefully they slip up at some point throughout this season. But, I mean, Milan also has the uh, – the, um, uh, the, the, the cup, the Euro Cup there. The, uh, sorry, not the Euro Cup. The Europa. The, the Europa Cup. So, I mean, we have other things to think of. I think Inter is basically all in on the championship this year, the Scudetto. So, and the depth they have, it's, it's you know, I watched the game today. It's a good team. Um, you know what? The, the, you, you bring up the depth often, like yeah. when we chat about Inter and Milan and the differences between the two of them. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. The, the depth is so, is, is so deep with Inter. They have... You look at Inter's bench, and those players could be starting on other teams. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. They could be starting on Inter, but they're just so deep yeah. that that he has such a selection of players to use. Yeah. And unfortunately, what you just said is is what we're gonna have to hope for. We're gonna have to hope for Inter to slip up. Yeah. So Inter, if you're out there slip and you're up. watching, slip up. Please slip up. Yeah. Okay, just just a little bit. Because I don't believe they play again this year, right? There's no... Uh, no, I, I think, think they've had done. the home and away, yeah. So, so we don't get a chance to make up any ground by playing them again. Yeah. We so, lost that opportunity. Yeah. So we really are looking for them to sort of stumble a bit. So we're going to need at least one week where they stumble. So the rest of the league, please. any All the teams I got to play Inter, just give them a run for their money, man. Try That's all best. we ask for. Yeah. Uh, because they are... You know, I watched today's game, and as much as I hate to say it, um, they're playing really well right now. They're, and they're uh, Lukaku, one of the best hold-up forwards you can have. I mean, Sanchez came in. I mean, you, you think about look, look who they, they subbed in. They subbed in Sanchez. They subbed in Vidal, right? Like, just unreal. And then, and then they subbed in a few, a few Italian yeah. players in there too, right? So, I mean, it's – yeah, depth is very helpful. It's a long season, you know, Coppa Italia, uh, Champions League, Europa League, so much soccer. Right? Yeah, it's changed so, in soccer now. Like, you notice teams nowadays – almost have a squad for everything that they have to do. Yeah. They'll have their squad for a Champions League yeah. if they're in that. Their squad for the, the league, then the squad for their internal, like the Coppa yeah. Italia, right? Yeah. So well, it's, it, it's Inter has definitely done a really good job accumulating players yeah. in order to be able to withstand that kind well, of... You, th you think you know, about it. This year, you think some of these players right now, they're going to finish the, the league. They're going to do all these... And they're going to go in and play the Euros. And play the Euros a lot of these And days, then, they're, right? then they're not going to have a time And the World and Cup is... Right around exactly, the and then they're gonna have to go back to the scudetto, right? They don't have much time off, right? So, I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I'm not gonna pamper athletes, but it's a, it's a lot, right? I mean, they get paid to do it, so do what you gotta do. I mean, but I mean, you gotta understand that physically, it's a lot of work, and they can only earn that money to a certain age, right? They're yeah. not gonna be earning that money when they're yeah. in their fifties and sixties, oh, so no. they gotta make what they need to make now, and uh, they sacrifice their bodies. Again, we're not gonna play a violin for athletes. At least professional athletes at that level. Yeah. But um, they definitely do work hard and earn it. But um, we got a two-one victory. Anything you want to say from the game that you noticed? You know what? No, man. It was, uh, you know, I mean, not the best game, but it, it was uh, effective. So yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna ramble on about stuff. But it was a decent victory, and we'll take the three points and we'll move on. And hopefully next week another three points. Well, I can't follow that better. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. It's been a fantastic day so far. We're looking forward to eating some food coming up soon. Yeah. And uh, just stay tuned with us and uh, Forza Milan.
Yeah. Sunilan. Thank you.